All right, hi guys. Today we're doing another empirical demonstration of the falsehood of climate alarm and global warming and its greenhouse effect. And this time it's going to be a little pyrotechnic in nature. We're going to use a magnifying glass and burn some stuff. So it's going to be a bit of fun. So first, let's uh, let's go back to this uh, basic contrast, this this basic demonstration of what they're doing with their greenhouse effect that they create this fraud of climate alarm and global warming from. So remember what they do well here, we'll start with the bottom sort of graphic. So this is what happens. We have the sun and of course the sun is shining on the earth and the sun shines at one time ever only on one hemisphere of the earth with the power, obviously with the intensity of sunlight at any given location, determining what happens at that location in terms of the heat that's generated, the temperature that's the heat that's transferred and the temperature which is generated and then the physical responses and things like that, right? So you have this uh, cross section here coming down, falling on the earth. The earth is rotating underneath that. And this intensity of sunlight is actually quite warm, quite hot, and it has enough energy and enough heat transfer to create cumulonimbus clouds and the climate and high temperatures and everything like that. What climate alarm and what climate science and what standard physics, peer reviewed physics and science and climate alarm and global warming is actually doing what they've actually peer reviewed all together with themselves and said, yes, this is how we think the, the world works, is they take sunlight and they spread it over the entire surface area of the earth at once. The incoming per second value of sunlight is what they use and it's what I, I've used down here for this diagram. They use that same value as well, represented by the FS here, the flux from the sun. They take that per second input and they spread it over the entire surface area of the earth at once. And as we've seen in previous videos, they say that that is actually basic geometry. And of course, it's completely, you know, crazy. And kindergarten students, kindergarten graduates can understand this, where PhDs in physics cannot, that the sun actually casts a shadow over the rear facing hemisphere. Um, this hemisphere facing away from the sun is in shadow. We call that nighttime, right? And then the hemisphere, which is facing the sun, we call daytime because that's where light is. And that's where heat is being generated and transferred from sunlight. So anyway, what climate alarm, what standard physics, modern physics apparently, and uh, climate physics does, spreads the sunlight over the entire surface area of the earth at once. So when you do that, you are spreading sunlight over surface area on paper in your mathematics over area it doesn't exist upon and therefore you are diluting sunlight. You're diluting it on paper. Now light, the power of light, the power of light to heat and to generate temperature is dependent on the light density, on the light's concentration, right? On its flux density. These values are given in terms of watts per meter squared, which is an energy flux density, a unit of energy per unit area per unit time. So the power that sunlight has is dependent on its density value locally as it's actually interacting with matter and that determines the physical reactions. So what they've done is they've diluted sunshine over four times the surface area that is actually intercepted. So it's diluted, that's where that factor of four is. It's diluted over the entire surface area of the earth at once in their mathematics, in their supposed physics. And then they get a result where what this works out to, if you convert it to a temperature, is minus 18 degrees Celsius. Maybe I'll show that, how that works out uh, in another video. So they make sunshine so diluted that it's minus 18 degrees Celsius, and then they say, scratch their brain, and they say, why is sunshine, sunshine so cold, and why is the surface any warmer than minus 18 degrees Celsius, if that's what the power of sunshine is? And then, because of that, they then invent this fake version of a greenhouse effect that's not actually how a real greenhouse functions. And then they say that it's this greenhouse effect where the climate is simply creating itself. The climate magically creates its own higher temperatures above minus 18 degrees Celsius because the sun can't do that. The climate by itself magically creates cumulonimbus clouds. They just feel like being created for no reason, even though they never had the heat input from the sun to do that in the first place. The climate just magically creates them out of nothing. Okay, so let's talk about this point of the concentration of sunlight and energy flux density. So let's first look at this little diagram here. So this diagram demonstrates the inverse square law, how the inverse square law works for 
uh, your energy flux density of sunlight. So you have the sun and it emanates out sort of wave fronts or, or at any given moment, if you take a one second snapshot, you have a bunch of photons just heading out from the very surface of the sun right on this perimeter of the sun. And then they boom, expand out at the speed of light as time continues. And the wave front you can see gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's symmetric because it, this wave front expands symmetrically around the sun. This is cross section. Obviously it's expanding in 3D, but the area increases as the surface area. So the surface area of this wave front increases as the square of the distance from the sun. And so the photons that were once concentrated around this parameter, as they expand out on this wave front, they're now concentrated all around this larger area. So here's the equation. So the flux of sunlight at some distance from the sun is the original flux, which is sigma times t to the fourth, and t is the effective surface temperature of the sun, times the radius of the sun over the distance of the sun squared. So as or the distance from the sun squared. So as d increases, the density of sunlight, the flux, decreases as the inverse square, because that d is on the bottom, so it's the inverse, and then it's all squared because it's the Basically, it's just the ratio of surface areas. You have four pi r sun squared divided by four pi distance from the sun squared. So the four pi is drop out and you just have r sun over distance from the sun squared. So at the surface of the sun, just at the surface of the sun, this one second snapshot of photons right around this perimeter has this value, 63 million plus a little bit watts per meter squared. So 63 million joules per second per meter squared. So it's a very high number, very, very warm. Because the temperature of the sun is like uh, 57, yeah, right here, 5,778 Kelvin, thereabouts. <clears throat> At the distance of the earth, this flux has been reduced by the inverse square law down to 1,370 watts per meter squared. So quite a bit lower. This value of sunlight is still obviously quite warm though it's 121 degrees celsius when converted to a black body so it's still quite warm so that's all great now what they do in their paper in their climate alarm um, peer-reviewed literature they take that density this what was falling here and they spread it over the entire surface area of the earth at once and then this actually if i should have adjusted that they reduce that to that divided by four so it's this value divided by four they say is falling evenly over the entire surface area of the earth okay so in terms of a magnifying glass now we're going to demonstrate what happens in a magnifying glass with a magnifying glass just for a second so you have the sun and the sun is very distant from the earth now this is a magnifying glass at the earth this is just a dashed line to represent that this is actually quite distant, but by the time you get to the earth, you basically have parallel incoming rays to a small handheld magnifying glass. So what the magnifying glass does is it reconcentrates those photons over its surface area. See, it collects a small cross section here of photons, which have originally come from the sun, quite distant. And now it is reconcentrating those photons back to a similar density that they originated at. And that density is quite intense and it has quite a hot temperature, a temperature similar to that of the surface of the sun. And with a focused magnifying glass, you can obviously, my phone is going crazy. You can obviously set things on fire, burn through paper, which we'll do. And you can even start fires, phone and things like that. Um, what they are doing in their climate alarm mathematics instead is basically transferring light instead, instead of through a convex lens, which folks is not that that happens on the earth or what happens on the earth that just obviously falls flat on the earth at its intensity, which is quite warm. But what they do is the opposite of this in their mathematics. They're basically passing sunlight through a convex lens, concave lens and they're diluting the sunshine. So when you concentrate sunshine, obviously you can set things on fire. When you have just standard sunshine coming in as it falls in on the surface of the earth, it's still warm enough to create cumulonimbus clouds and create that physical reaction. 
What they do by diluting sunshine, effectively passing it through a concave lens, is they're diluting sunshine to an even lower power that wouldn't even have the power to create cumulonimbus clouds or the climate or melt uh, ice into water at standard atmosphere or anything like that. So that's what they're doing in the mathematics on paper. That's what they think the sun does. They think for some reason that it's basic geometry, that sunlight gets spread over the entire surface area of the earth at once, all these crazy things. So we're just gonna do a, an, a, an empirical demonstration here, and that'll be the end of the video of a magnifying glass burning things and how it demonstrates how what they're doing on paper is again, simply so nonsensical and totally physically meaningless. Okay, so we'll go to that video and then it'll just end there. Okay, so, all right. So we'll go to that video now and uh, take care. All right, guys, so we got a beautiful sunny day here today, finally, middle of July. Looks like summer has finally come and I got my handy dandy magnifying glass. So look what happens with this magnifying glass. So here, the focus of the magnifying glass is about the same as its uh, diameter. So nothing is happening to that paper. The, the light is just going through the magnifying glass and then it's coming out and hitting the paper at basically the same density that it's entering the magnifying glass minus a little bit of whatever transmission uh, is there. Um, not, not going through that glass entirely. But anyway, generally it's coming through that magnifying glass. It's the same density falling on the paper. And what happens to the paper? Nothing, right? Nothing is happening. Just, just like out here, nothing is happening to that paper warming up a little bit out in the sun. But what happens when we focus this sunlight, when we recondense this sunlight back to the density, or back to nearly the density it has when it originates at the sun's surface? Look at that. Look how it lights this paper on fire burns right through it. See the smoke? See it burning those holes? See that? That's because we're concentrating the sunlight. We're recondensing the sunlight. And with this increased density of light, this increased concentration, this increased energy flux density, that light becomes extremely powerful, extremely hot, and can set things alight like this piece of paper here. Now, of course, when we defocus the spot, nothing happens. And look, we can even go out further and look, we're making that light actually less and less dense now by pulling the magnifying glass back further and defocusing it even further. So now that light is actually occupying a larger surface area than is actually uh, represented here. Oops, some wind by the by the diameter of this uh, magnifying glass the area of this magnifying glass lens itself so in that case that light becomes actually even less dense and cooler than the sunlight falling on the paper and then again you refocus that light and it becomes extremely hot again and can set things on fire okay <laughs>